Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me on tonight. Before we get started, I want to open up with a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you right now for every listener to God. I ask right now that you would captivate their mind to God. I ask that you will bring their mind under, under the subjection of the Holy Ghost, dear God. I pray right now to God that you would anoint every listener's ears, God, that they will hear what it is you are speaking on tonight, dear God. Anoint their eyes to see what you are saying on tonight, to see your what you are portraying to them on tonight through this word, dear God. I thank you right now for every listener, dear God. I ask that your anointing would saturate their home, saturate that atmosphere where they are to God I thank you for your word that is going forth on tonight to God I thank you for being your vessel I thank you once again for allowing us to sit at your feet feed us from with your manna from heaven oh God until we want no more to God we give you glory we give you praise in advance for every seed sown for every share for every tag and for every listener in Jesus name we pray amen and amen listen I am excited about this word on tonight I am excited because number one, it is a continuation from our Friday night live service. So if you did not um, look at the live that I rebroadcast last Monday night, make sure you go back and look at that because that will help you to understand where we are going tonight. Listen, did God not meet us there on the first Friday night? Listen, God dealt with us about the weight. He dealt with us about what he was going to do while we're waiting. And even on tonight, listen, he is not done. God is not done with that. He told me to tell, he said, tell my sons and my daughters that while you, while they are waiting, I am yet preparing them. We dealt with this some on last Friday, like I said, but we're going to deal with it on tonight. He says, understand that while you're waiting, he said, do not allow the enemy to tell you that you are wasting time. He said, with him, there's no time wasted. In fact, God says, I'm using everything. He says, I'm using everything that you're going through, everything that you've been through. I'm going to use it for my glory. Nothing is wasted. So stop saying, I wasted time doing this and I waste, nothing is wasted. Listen, listen. He said, in fact, he said, tell them to go back and look at what I spoke in Joel 2. Joel 2, 23 through 30. Joel 2, 23 through 30. Be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you my God listen to this he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first month and the floor shall be full of wheat we talked about the wheat listen listen the floor shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil the anointing come on now and I will restore, listen, my God, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. Listen, nothing's wasted. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of your Lord, of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord, your God and nobody else. Listen, and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass after, after the wait. Listen, it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days. I will pour out my spirit. Listen to this. 
and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Listen, listen, what is God saying? Nothing is wasted. He said, even that what the what the canker worm and the palmer worm think they ate up. He said, I'm going to restore unto you. Listen, nothing is wasted. While you are waiting, he is processing you. Oh my God. Listen, listen. I love this. He said he going to cause the former rain and the latter rain. Oh God. The former blessings and the blessings to come to come down on you. Listen, he says, be glad. Oh, listen, come on, somebody. Be glad while you're waiting. Listen, remember we talked about this on last Friday. What's your attitude while you're waiting? Are you complaining? Are you like the children of Israel that's going to mummer and complain and be in that wilderness for 40 years because of what you complained about? Or are you, listen, or are you going to be glad because I already know what my God going to do? Oh, my God. Listen, listen, listen. Let's 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 dig let's deal in this um these this text. He says, I will restore unto you the years, nothing wasted, that the swarming locusts have eaten. God promises to restore what was taken away. Listen, he said, even what I listen, listen to what God is saying tonight. Even what I took away or what I allowed to be taken away when I was chastising you, I'm gonna restore it. Oh my God, listen. When the locusts did their work, it looked complete and final. Listen, but God promised that he could even restore the years. What the enemy has taken, what he allowed, what even what God allowed to be taken. And you said, that's the end. It ain't going to come back. It's, it, it, I never had, he said, I'm going to restore. <laughs> oh God. And we know when God restores, it's 10 times better. Listen, we know when God restores, we, we step over into the abundant. Listen, my God, he says, and it shall come, not maybe, not might, not I hope and pray, but it shall come to pass afterward, after the restoration. Listen, Joel spoke of the, in the previous, if you go back in Joel 1, you will listen to the previous chapter. There will come a time of ultimate, listen, ultimate restoration and blessing. This latter time is going to be, is going to be marked. By the outpouring of God's spirit. Listen, he said, because you waited, you took the right posture when you waited. He said, I'm going to restore everything that you think you lost. I'm going to give you better. Then I'm going to outpour my anointing on you. Oh God, my God, listen to this promise. I'm going to outpour my spirit upon you on all flesh. Listen, listen. And also on my maid and also on my men servants and on my maid servant, women and men. Who am I talking to tonight? Women and men. In this latter time, all the servants of the Lord who have waited in the right posture. Listen, this, this is what happened when you wait. When you wait in the right posture, he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit on you. You will be filled with, this, with his spirit in this unique and powerful way. Listen, he, what is he saying? Nobody's going to have to lay hands on you this time. Oh, God, I love you. He says, because you waited in the right posture, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon you. Listen, 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 listen. He says, and, and also on my men's servant and my maid servant, in the latter time, you will give this special anointing or outpouring in a powerful way under the new covenant. For those of you that, that don't, because we, we have people that only want to talk about the new Testament. They don't want to talk about the old Testament. Listen, under the new covenant, covenant, every believer can receive the full measure of the spirit and be used in a special and powerful way. When? When you wait and get processed through. What is he saying? It is dangerous. Oh God, I love you. Here we go. It is dangerous to be in a position without being processed. Who am I talking to? It is a different, it is dangerous. I'm the prophet to the nation, but you ain't been processed through. You inviting warfare. Oh God, who am I talking to? You are in white, you are inviting demonic warfare when you get in a position and you ain't been processed. You are in it illegal. Oh, here we go. You are in it illegally. In fact, you snuck it. Oh God, here we go. When you ain't been processed through, watch this. And the thing about it, those that those of us that have been processed through, we know you here illegally. We know you, we, we know you didn't come through the ranks. We know you didn't get processed through. We know you wasn't tried by fire. But since you in here, the warfare is 10 times greater. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to leave that long. So let, let's look at this. 
biblical examples I, I wanted to pull when I was sitting. I said, God, let, let me reveal to me those in the Bible that waited in the right posture. And what did you do for them? I, I want to find, and this is how I study. I want to find examples of those that waited. They were in the right posture. And you poured out your spirit upon them and they did great and mighty exploits for the kingdom of God. Watch this. And, and the first one I looked at was Abraham waiting for a promise to be fulfilled. H Hebrews 6, 15. Then Abraham waited patiently and he received what God promised. We know Abraham is the father of many nations. Watch this. Abraham was promised an heir through his wife, Sarah. We know the story. They both were really old. This period of waiting. Listen. Waiting for 25 years. Oh, God. Listen, this period of waiting lasted for 25 years. Sarah did eventually give birth to Isaac and the Lord did to Sarah as he promised. Genesis 21 and 1. Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. He trusted in God to keep the promise that his offspring would be numerous like the stars in the sky. Ooh, God. See, listen. When you wait and God come through, it exceeds what you was waiting for. Listen, listen, y'all don't hear me tonight. Y'all don't hear me tonight. L listen, thank you for your seed. God bless you. Those of you that are already sowing. Listen, I, I need to sow on this one myself. Listen, he says they waited 25 years for one. They, they were waiting for one child. Oh, God, listen, y'all better catch this tonight. They just wanted one child. Waited for 25 years and became the father of nations. Who, Lord have mercy. Listen, listen, let's, let's look at another one. Joseph waiting in prison for a purpose. Listen, waiting in prison for a purpose. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Genesis 50 and 20. We know the story of Joseph. Joseph was his father's favorite son. His brothers hated him because he was this. Not only are you the favorite son, but you always having these dreams and you always telling us about these dreams. And in the dreams that always make us look like we're going to serve you, we're going to be beneath you. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to get rid of you. So they sold him into slavery and told the daddy that, that, that he was dead. Got, got some animal blood on, on, on Joseph's coat of many colors, took it back to the dad. Joseph dead, broke the daddy's heart. Watch this. After being sold into slavery at the age of 17 by his brothers and then thrown into prison for a crime that he didn't even commit, Joseph made use of every opportunity that came his way. He interpreted dreams of fellow prisoners, including one who served as cupbearer to Pharaoh. The interpretation Joseph made of his dream was that the cupbearer would be released from prison. Joseph asked him to remember him and show kindness by mentioning him to Pharaoh. And we know how the story goes. Joseph gets elevated from prison to the palace. Oh God, who am I talking to? From the prison to the palace. Listen, however, the cupbearer forgot about Joseph after his release. Two years passed before Pharaoh even needed, even needed to even get an interpretation of a dream. Two years he waited. And then he would, and then he, listen, two years he waited. Did what God told him to do while he waited. Then he was elevated from the prison to the palace. Who am I talking to tonight? Listen, listen. Eventually, Pharaoh made Joseph his second. It not. Listen, all Joseph said was, remember me when you get out. He didn't say nothing about, I want to serve Pharaoh. I want to be in the palace. Didn't even ask. Listen to what he get for waiting in the right posture. Eventually, Pharaoh made Joseph the second in command in all of Egypt at the age of 30. Listen, thrown in the pit when he was 17. Listen, listen to this gap. Thrown in the pit when he was 17. Elevated to next to the next to the king by 30. Listen, it's power in your weight. I, I, I keep telling y'all, listen, here's another one. And we know the story of Job. Job waited through suffering. You have heard of the steadfastness of, steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. James 5 and 11. 
When it comes to understanding sur suffering, we always go to Job. We know that Job's wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die? His friends came and said, what did you do to deserve this? His, he lost his children. He lost his animals. He, he His health started failing. And, and the thing about this, God initiated the attack on Job. Be why? Because he had so much faith in who Job was. See, some of y'all don't understand. God think more of you than you think of your own self. And he's initiating some stuff to put you in. Oh, here we go. He's initiating some stuff to put you in a position that's going to catapult you to your to the highest level you, you could ever go. But you think, oh, the devil just picking on me. No, so, sometimes God allowed this stuff to happen to get you in a position so he can process you. Hula, here we go. So he can process you through to get you where you need to be so he can elevate you into the right position for his kingdom. That is what he did. Listen, listen, Job suffered. God started. Have you considered my servant Job? Y'all know the story. And, and Job was tempted on every measure, even in his health, even with his friends, even with his wife, lost all his children. In the end, he received more than he could ever dream of. More children. More, more, more cattle, more land, better health. Listen, listen, Job's wife saw that all her husband endured as well as losing her children. Yet, listen, this is talking about the posture. His wife saw all this. She said, why don't you curse God and die? But she had to realize Job remained faithful to God despite all the negative advice he was getting. Despite his wife saying, curse him and die. Despite his friends saying, well, what did you do to deserve this? Well, maybe it's something you done. Maybe it's something your kids did. Despite all that, he remained faithful. And God blessed Job abundantly after his time of struggle and waiting. Listen, it's power in your wait. You got you to gotta make sure you're in the right posture while you're waiting. You can't be waiting and complaining. Listen, if you're going to cry while you wait, cry in faith. If you're going to cry, cry, cry like Job, God, if, if you don't deliver, don't mean you can't. Listen, listen, listen. You got to understand this. Listen, David, let me go one more. I got, actually, I got two more. David waited to be king at an appointed time. Listen, we know the story of David on the backside of the de desert, tending to the sheep. When, when the prophet Samuel came around to anoint the next king, David wasn't even considered. They looked over David. Listen. I know you don't want that old ruddy boy, David. I mean, look at all my other sons. Yes, say, look at all my other sons. Look, look at them. They, they fit the bill. David didn't, oh, God have mercy. David didn't even fit the bill. You don't even look the part. You don't even, nah. And, 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 and the prophet kept saying, they got to be another one. Mm -mm. They got to be another one. Because these boys, you got, yeah, they, 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 they look the part. But there got to be another one. And here come old dirty David. Listen, back on the backside of the de desert, Tending to the sheep and worshiping God. Oh God, listen. On the backside of the desert, worshiping God with the sheep, learning how to be a shepherd. Oh God, listen. And so what happens? He come in, Samuel anoint him. And then Samuel even says out of his own mouth, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know that you are. Oh God, I love you. Listen, listen. So Saul was made the first king of Israel. However, he rebelled against God and God rejected him as king. That's 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 10. At that time, God spoke through his prophet Samuel and it was revealed that Samuel, it was revealed to Samuel that God anointed king would be David, who at the time, listen to this, who at the time was between 16 and 19, a boy. But you're going to be king. Listen, however, David was not made king. Listen to this. He did not step into that position until he was 30 years old. Oh, God. But what did he do? <laughs> God, I love you. What did he do between the age of 16 to 19 and 30? So we talking about approximately 14 years. What did David do? He served the king. Oh, God. He, he served. He did what he was already doing. He was still worshiping. He was still praising God. Listen, listen. Despite being relentless pursued, even when he was pursued by, by Saul, David remained faithful to God and waited to be made king. I know that I'm anointed for this, but I'm going to wait until I'm... Pro oh God, here we go. I know that I'm anointed for this. Who am I talking to tonight? I know that you know that you're anointed. Listen, you know that you called, but have you been processed through? 
My God, have mercy. Have you been processed through yet to step into that rightful position? David waited until he was processed through till he came into that rightful position, knowing that the, his enemy Saul was trying to kill him. Watch this, knowing that at many times, David even told Saul, I got the edge of your robe. I could have killed you, but God told me touch not his, oh my God. Listen, listen, I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. David, listen, David was faithful to God and waited to be made king. David did ascend to the throne in time, but it had to overcome many obstacles before the promise was re realized, God granted David a lot of success and favor with his people when he was king because of the posture that he took while he waited. Who God, listen, favor. Listen to this tonight. Favor with God and man because you waited. Because of your posture while you wait. Because you didn't get in a hurry and say, I'm anointed to do this, so I'm going to step in it right now. But you waited. You served. Oh God, listen, because you served while you waited. See, see, a lot of y'all don't understand because a lot of you are just getting to know me. But you know, I've been preaching for over 20 something years now. You don't know that I have served under different leaders and, and got their ministries to a posture in prayer. And now God gave me, gave me sold out international. Now God gave me worship and warfare. Now God gave me EP3 ministries. But you don't know when I served under leaders and I did shut-ins in their church. Listen, you don't know when I served in, in, under leaders and I taught Bible study in Sunday school and the children's ministry. I had to be processed through. I didn't just wake up and say, oh, God called me to be the prophet. Let me go ahead and start this now. No, no, no. I had to be processed through. Can you serve? Who am I talking to tonight? Can you serve or do you just want to be the next wonder? Okay, let, let me leave that alone. Listen, listen, listen. There is a time for everything and every matter under the sun. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Timing in God is everything. Listen, listen. Uh, the, the, the final one, the ultimate one. Jesus himself. Listen, Jesus himself had to wait. Oh God, listen. The heavens were open, the heavens were open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form, like a dove, and the voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about 30 years old. That is Luke 3 and 21 through 23. But remember when he was 12 and his parents was looking for him and they found him in the temple? He knew who he was called to be then. Y'all missing it tonight. Watch this. The public ministry of Jesus did not begin until he was 30 years old. The three years after that, his life was filled with living alongside his disciples to prepare them for when he would no longer be with them. It was the time of going from place to place, fulfilling the prophecies that were made about him and for telling people to repent and believe for God's kingdom had come near. Mark 1, 15. Even after he was anointed and the dove came. Three years, he went from place to place doing what he was called to do. Before he got to that ultimate assignment, which was to go to heaven for us. Which was to go to the cross for us. Which was to give up his life for our life. Three years. And from the age of 12 to 30, he already knew what he was sent to do. But he had to be processed through. Listen, couldn't go from age 12 straight to the cross. He had to be processed through, but we don't want to be processed through. We don't want to wait. We want to go from God. I had a dream. I was preaching. Let me go get a church. I had a dream. I was a prophet. Let me go start prophesying to everybody. It's Listen, listen, prophets. It's timing is strategic when it comes to the prophetic. God can show you something and say, now don't open your mouth. But when you're in a hurry and you gung-ho, you want to give it right now. God didn't say you to give it right now. Who am I talking to? Timing is everything. When God speaks and give you a dream, who am I talking to tonight? And tell you, this is what I want you to do. This, this is the next thing I want you to do. I'm going I'm to launch this. And we think he mean tomorrow. Just because we had a dream, we ain't prayed, we ain't fasted. God, give me more wisdom on that. God, give me more guidance on that. God, give me more direction on that. God, give, give, show me exactly strategically how you want this to plan out. Or send the right person that can help me. No, we go from, I had a dream, let me start it. I had a dream, let me go, let me go get to work. 
not processed through. Watch this. Listen. Seven things, and I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to be long. Seven things God does while he's preparing you. Oh, God, listen. He renews you. One, renewal. He renews you. And no one puts new wine. Oh, God, I love this. No one puts new wine into old wine skins. For the old skin, my God, I love you. Uh, for the old skins would burst from the pressure. Listen to this. The old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine is stored in new skins so that they are both preserved. Oh, God. Listen. Remember, he's going to pour out his anointing on you when you wait. But he can't put it in the old skin. He got to put it in the new skin so it can be preserved. So while you wait, he renews you before he pour all this oil and this anointing on you. My God, listen, listen. When you embark into a new season in your life, it's not just the circumstances that God wants to make new. But more importantly, it is you that he wants to make new. Just like an old wine skin would burst if you put new wine in it. Think about you trying to drag your old self into a new anointing. Think about God trying to pour this new and fresh anointing in your old self. What would you do? You could not handle it. You would burst. So he got to renew you. He got to renew Elizabeth before I pour all this anointing in her. Oh my God. Listen, listen. Number two. Number two. Seven things God does during preparation. He steals you. Stillness. Stillness. For God alone my soul waits in silence and quietly submits to him for my hope is in him. Psalm 62 and 5. Waiting is the prime time to seek God. Listen, if I know that God has me in a waiting process or if I know that God has me in a, a posture of waiting, that is when I'm going to be fasting. That is when I'm going to be praying. That is what I'm going to start. Okay, I'm waiting on God to, to do this thing in me. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm about to revamp my whole schedule. When I get off work, it ain't going to be no TV. It's going to be a time of prayer and meditation. I'm going to eat my dinner. I'm going to have my bath. Then I'm going to go back in another time of prayer and meditation. Then I'm going to bed. When I get up in the morning, I'm going to get up an hour early. I'm going to consecrate and labor for the Lord. I'm going to listen to my music. I'm going to meditate and pray. And you set a schedule. Why? Because I'm seeking him even the more. Why? Because while I'm waiting, I need a word. And listen, if you wait in the right posture, God will give it to you. He got to send it through the prophet. Whew. Listen, and when the prophet come and they give you a word, it's going to confirm what God already told you. Oh, God, listen, listen. You need waiting seasons to focus on God and experience his power and direction. While I'm waiting, I go deeper in him. So that means my, my time in prayer going to change up. My time of fasting going to change up. So I used to fast in the morning from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mm -mm, I'm going to amp it up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start fasting now from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Then I'm going to have a light snack. Listen, or better yet, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm, since, I'm, since I'm in this waiting period, what I'm going to do is fruits and veggies until it happens. Oh, God, y'all ain't ready. And I'm not going to play with the fast. I ain't going to break it and get back. I'm going I'm to wait. Why? Because I know God going to come. Listen, listen, listen. If you're careful to not obsess over things you're waiting for, then you can find that the space in your life is sold to seek God and grow closer to him. You don't take the time that you're waiting to start stressing about what you're waiting for. Who am I talking to? You take this time, okay, God, you ain't answered yet. So that means I'm in a, in a waiting pattern. So since I'm in a waiting pattern, I'm going to take this time to grow, to grow to draw closer to you. Not to complain. Not, not, not to beg you because I want it in a microwave um, um, season. I, I want it quick. I want it. I, I only want to be processed through. I want it right now. No, what I'm going to do is get on my face and draw closer to you. Oh, God, why? Because I know that you're going to do it. I know that you can. I know that you will. It's, it's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of me being in the right posture when you do it. My God, listen, listen. Number three, reflection. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Psalms 40 and 2. Watch this. Waiting is the prime time. Listen, to slow down. Listen, and remind yourself. Listen, of what God already done. 
what God has done in your life, what God has done in those connected to you. And it's the time to give God glory and, and let your prayer start being a prayer of thankfulness. Who am I talking to? God, I just want to go and pray tonight. I'm not, I know I know what I'm waiting on, but I ain't even going to focus on that tonight. I'm going to focus on thanking you for what you already did. Listen, listen. And when you stop to appreciate all that God has done for you while in a waiting season, it helps you to maintain the patience. Listen, this is how you encourage yourself. When you go in prayer, you begin to thank God for what he already done. So what happens is while I'm thanking God, it puts me in a position to, to, to wait a little longer until it comes. It kind of strengthens me. Why? Because it, it, it gives me more, more stamina in my weight. Listen, listen. Now, number four, healing. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Philippians 3 and 13. While you're waiting, it's a great time to experience his healing from recent pains or recent struggles. While I'm waiting, I'm going to ask God to heal me of everything broken in my life. Heal me of every of every negative thought. Heal me of everything that was left over from the past. Heal me from unforgiveness. While I'm waiting, God, is a good time for you to heal me. Why? Because I don't want to take this old stuff into my new dimension. I don't want to take this old hurt into the new place you set me in. Listen, listen, watch this, watch this. Number five, while you're waiting, it's a good time for refreshment. Sometimes God brings us into a season of rest and refreshment before the next season. Who am I talking to? He has put before the next season. Life has a flows and seasons that come and go. And some of them are busy seasons that require a lot out of you. So what God, because what, what you're praying for, oh, here we go. Because what you're believing God for, the job, the house, the, 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 the um, ministry, the, the marketplace ministry, all this stuff you be believe in God for, the truth of it is you don't know what's going to come with that thing. And so in while you're waiting, God will give you a season of rest to prepare you because what you what you got coming may require more out of you than you already do it. It may require it may require you to work some more extra hours. It may require you to burn the midnight oil. It may require you to be on the go more than you are now. So what God would do is he would give you rest in your waiting season. And this is what I found. This is what I found. And I found this. I learned this or I experienced this after I got my doctorate. So after I got my doctorate, because I remember they were telling me when I started studying for my doctorate, you have six years that you can get this done. I said, I can't give you six. Mm -mm. And I'm just that type of person. I can't give you six years, but I can give you three. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. I said, God, because you told me to go after this thing, you're going to have to help me. I need to get it done in three years. I can't give them six years. That's too long. God did it in three. Listen. God did it in three years. And what happened, I, I, now I worked my tail off, wanted to quit, wanted to cry, wanted to kick and scream. I, because it was hard. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Because I think, I think I'm pretty smart. But that thing put me to the test. When you're talking about writing. Because if I went to the University of Phoenix and see what you have to do in the University of Phoenix, which is different from a lot of other schools, is you have to write a book. Your dissertation is a published book. It ain't no just let me get up here and defend. No, this is a book. And, do, and, and other people that have their doctorate in those levels in, in that in that area is going to critique your book. Pull it apart. Start over. That ain't right. That don't make that that chapter don't go with that chapter. And so I worked so hard and, and I finally got it done in three years, by the way. And, and, and what happened was after I was finished done with the doctorate, I was sitting like, hmm, what am I supposed to do now? I couldn't handle the fact that God was actually giving me rest after I did all that work. I was looking for something else to do. And it literally bothered me like really, really bad that I had nothing to do. Like I was just chilling. And I'm like, well, maybe I need to roll in school again. I didn't know what I was going to take up. I was like, I'm going to be a guidance counselor. I'm going to go, I'm going to roll back in school. I could not handle the rest until God had to tell me I'm giving you rest because I'm about to launch you out. And I was like, whoa, whoa. So gave me rest, watch this, for, for about, I don't know if it was quite a year, but gave me rest and then my ministry took off. 
gave me rest and then I launched worship and warfare. Gave me rest and then he plowed out of me, I need four or five books. Listen, gave me rest first, then, then shot me out like a cannon. So when God say rest, you better rest because you don't know what's coming next. Who am I talking to? Listen, listen. Number six. Number six is growth. What does God do while you're waiting in your preparation? Growth is number six. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth. You were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. What I just said, you will overflow with thankfulness. That's Colossians 2 and 7. When you are waiting, you are growing. Remember what we started out with? Nothing's wasted. He said, I I'm restoring everything. He said, while you're waiting, you're growing. Listen, nothing wasted. Even if you can't see it yet, you can't see the evidence of your growth. You are growing. Can I encourage you tonight? Those of you that are waiting, you're actually growing. My God, you need, you need to type that right there in the comment section. I am growing. I am growing. Put it down there. I am growing. Listen, get you a sticky note. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your mirror in your bathroom. Every time you look up there, just put, I am growing. Listen, listen, God is doing a great work in you, but you got to see it. You got to speak it out of your mouth. You got to decree it and declare it. I am growing. Listen, listen. In waiting seasons, you will grow in your faith and your dependence on God. Listen, especially when you can't make things go any faster. Oh, oh God. You can't make it speed up. You can't make it speed up. So your dependence on God is growing. Your dependence on daddy is growing. Oh, Lord, I like that. My dependence on daddy is growing. Oh, my faith in daddy is growing. Listen, 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 listen. Then when it when you trust in him and in his plan for your life is tested, and that is when you will see the most growth. When that test comes, you don't respond like you used to. Growth. That test come. You ain't cussing out this time. Growth. That test come. You didn't get it when you did, when you wanted. So you didn't fall out and complain and, and quit tithing and quit sowing. And I don't believe God no more. I ain't sowing no more. You didn't do that. You're growing. Listen, listen. You're growing. Watch this. Number seven. Anticipation. Oh, God. Listen. I wait patiently for the Lord. My soul expectantly waits. And in his word do I hope. Psalms 130 and 5. If you are currently in a waiting season of your life, listen, if you are currently in a waiting season of your life, take heart. Why are you telling me to take heart, Dr. Three? Why are you telling me to take heart, prophetess? Why are you telling me to take heart, Elizabeth? Why are you telling me to take heart, Peaches? Why? Because you are right where you're supposed to be. Oh, my God. You are right where you're supposed to Listen, listen. I'm going to have to move this phone because the cash app going crazy. You are right where you supposed to be. Listen, listen. You're right where you're supposed to be. Even if it feels like torture. <laughs> oh, God. Even if it feels like torture, you are right where you're supposed to be. You may doubt and you may wonder if God promises will ever come to pass. But listen to me tonight. Keep trusting. God is faithful. He going to do everything he said and then some. He says, tell them, daughter, they right where I want them. They right where they supposed to be. Listen, listen to this. Listen to Micah 7 and 7. But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior. Why? Because my God will hear me. Ooh, my God will hear me. God does hear you. Never doubt that. He said, my ear is tuned in. My ear is turned towards them. Tell them I hear what they're saying. I hear what they need. He said, I am right there. But I need them to get in a position. And I need them to wait. He said, tell them. He keep telling me this. He said, tell them it's a dangerous place. It's dangerous. Listen, oh God. It's dangerous to be in a position without being processed through. Danger. Why? Because Satan loves when you get in those positions and you ain't been processed through. You, in, you, you inviting the warfare. And what's, what does Satan do? He loves to make a spectacle out of the saints. What do he love to do? He said, because those that say, oh, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophet. Let me go ahead and, let me go ahead and start doing this. 
Okay. And you even process through. Satan let you get all the way out there. And then let you just make a complete mockery of yourself. And then now you got people looking at you. She said he, she was a prophet. He said he was a prophet. And look at him now. And then you mad at God. When, when God said, no, 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 no. I told you who I called you to be in your mother's womb. But you got to be processed through. Jeremiah didn't jump out his mother's womb from, and from as a baby start becoming a prophet. Let, okay, let me leave that. Listen, let, let me close. God the Father knows the appointed time for all things. Listen, we can make the best use of our time, including when we wait. We do not know what is going to happen next. We don't know what's around the corner. We don't know. We don't even know when Jesus coming. He hasn't even revealed that to anyone and he's not going to. But you can make the most time while you're waiting. You can make the best of that time. What did I say? By drawing close to him, by fasting, by praying, by seeking his face. And what was the seven things that I said he's going to do for you while you wait? One, he's going to renew you. Two, he's going to steal you. Three, you're good. he's going to cause you to do reflection. Four, he's going to heal you. Five, he's going to refresh you. Six, you're going to have growth in him. And seven, he's going to give you a sense of urgency and anticipation. Listen, and I'm going to close with this statement. I'm going to close with this statement. Remain in position until you are processed through. Don't get ahead of God. Don't get in a hurry. Wait through the process. Listen, I'm going to give you one more scripture. And I promise I am going to close. I'm going to close with this one. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping any of his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Look, what, what is God saying? What is God saying? A day to me is like a thousand years to you. But every promise that I made going to come to pass. Listen, he says, I'm patient with you. Can't you be patient with me? Who God, listen. He says, I am patient with you. Can't you be patient with me? I'm going to close out with rereading Joel 2, 23 through 30. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and your vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to, unto you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that have, that have dealt wondrously with you. And my people, you shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am the in the midst of you. And I am the Lord your God and no one else. And my people will never be ashamed. Listen, listen. And what does he say? And I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also upon my servants, men and women. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Listen, this is what you get when you wait. Listen, I love you with the love of God. I'm out of time, but you know I am not out of word. Listen, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for listening tonight. Please, please, please share this word. I want the gospel to be spread throughout the nation. If God has laid it on your heart to sow, the cash app is pinned on the page. The, the PayPal is pinned on the page. The Zelle is pinned on the page. Listen, you are sowing into good ground. You are sowing into good ground. And please, whatever you do, don't forget first Friday nights. We are live and in person. Don't just keep coming by yourself. Bring somebody with you. Listen, those of you that already sold, my God, God bless you. God bless you. You're sowing into good ground. We're doing a work over in India. We're getting ready for worship and warfare. 
God's girl. I'm doing something special with them. My mentees, I'm doing something special with them. We are building a kingdom that God is going to be proud of. We are building men and women that are going to take this gospel to the nations. I am super excited about what God is doing in these end times. I'm just happy to be among those that are willing to do the work of the Lord. Not trying to make my name great, but I am trying to make Jesus name even greater in this earth. Listen, I love you. God bless you. Please share the broadcast and I'll see you again next Monday. Love you.